Oh. We're live. Hey, wellness class is on. So um, muted my phone, totally focused on everybody here. We got everything set up, waiting for people to come in. So we'll give it a few minutes and see if we get some live people coming. And then um, I do have an assistant with me here today. So everybody wave hi to Terry when you see her. And um, she may be scurrying around. She may jump into camera later. I left it up to her. We'll see what she wants to do. But um, the biggest thing is, is I wanted to uh, be able to have somebody here to assist me to be able to, you know, hand me stuff and that kind of stuff. And, well, she's my buddy, my pal, and works on oils with me, too. So, anyway, I'm probably going to be repetitive on quite a few things tonight as people come in and go out and come in and go out. I'm going to just visit with people and give you a little idea of what I've got going on right now tonight before I really start with the class so we can have some more people come on board. Um, I have brought all of my essential oils from doTERRA. So, um, hold your shorts. Prepare to fall over. Here's box number one. Okay, so you can't see that. Ouch! <laughs> Told you there'd be humor. There's box number one, and I've got <laughs> all of them, and that's not all of them. I have a second box too, but I wanted to let you guys see that I have quite a selection to choose from. So for any condition that we need to work on or treat on, I've got an oil. I'll be making roller balls for people tonight. Um, this is a roller ball. Topical application is a huge deal. Um, so I have a bunch of roller balls available. Yeah, and I'm getting some feedback from tech support here, so hang with me. Um, everybody out there, can you guys give me a thumbs up or throw down some like, tap the like button, and tell me you can hear me fine? Because we have our sound off in here, so we don't have a double echo. I see a hello. Can you hear me okay? And is it feeding fine? We want to be sure we have a good feed. There may be a delay, and some people Absolutely. may see some of that stuff going on. But um, it's going to naturally be delayed from what my tech person and I see here compared to what you guys are seeing out there. So looks like, hooray, okay, I see everybody in the likes going on, so we're good. So also... I brought a lot of my books along so we can talk about some of the educational materials that I use. And um, no anxiety Tuesday. Anxiety is a big topic for a lot of people. And so I wanted to cover anxiety and talk about people's definitions of anxiety. Um, I've had conversations with my own family members and I go, okay, well, you're having anxiety. Tell me what, what define your anxiety for me. And I'll just use my own daughter as one example. Um, we were, you know, she recently got her driver's license and has been learning how to drive. And one thing I've always taught her is, you know, think ahead. What if, what if, what if? And so we were talking in the car the other day and she says, you know, I'm having some anxiety, mom. And I said, well, what, define your anxiety. She says, well, it's like when I'm driving, I'm always thinking three steps ahead. And I said to her, I said, well, that's not anxiety. That's uh, a thought process that I taught you. And it's, it's self-preservation. It's defensive driving. And to her, it was frustrating to have that going on because she didn't understand it. And it, it bothered her at sometimes because she was like, I'm always worried about this and this and this. I said, don't be worried. It's a tool and an asset. So use that to your benefit. And when I've discussed that with other teens and other people with their teens that have that same thing going on, um, that a lot of times they're calling anxiety when it's actually a normal thought process. They just haven't identified what it is exactly yet and how to use it as to their advantage. So after having that conversation, she had to reclassify um, her definition of anxiety. And then another thing that happens, I've had quite a few clients that I've dealt with regarding anxiety who um, a lot of women have problems driving. And as they're driving, they'll feel like they got hands growing around their throat and they're stuck in the slow lane doing 45 miles an hour. And they're just totally paranoid about driving on the road and their heart palpitations, they're sweating. They can't function, they get dizzy, they're ready to pass out. All very dangerous, especially when you're driving, to have that type of anxiety happen with people. And there's some people that really suffer with that. 
Well, that's where I've actually had these people, I've gotten them on a CBD product and the next day they're calling me up going, oh my God, it's gone. And it's stunning to me that they have such a fast response to it that way. Just CBD, we're not even talking terpenes or essential oil enhancements at all at that point. We're just talking CBD, okay? So, and other things with anxiety, um, true anxiety, there's PTSD sufferers who suffer anxiety from PTSD. Now, another thing I wanted to talk about with PTSD, um, I'm calling it PTSD right now. There is a whole other faction of people who want to call it PTS, and I want to discuss that. And if anybody has any feedback, please type it in there, and uh, let's discuss it for sure. But um, uh, there's a select group of veterans who call it PTS which is post-traumatic stress, not post-traumatic stress disorder. And I really do prefer that, and I think I'm really gonna try to work hard to bring my terminology back to PTS. I add the D because publicly so many people look to, they understand it when you say PTSD. They know exactly what you're talking about at that time. If you leave the D off, they may not get it. No, what is a new condition? you know, just because people don't understand. But when you tag somebody with a label like a disorder, you take something like stress and you make it a permanent condition for them. And it doesn't have to be. A lot of times stress management can be done with evaluating your thinking process. So that's a lot of what I do too, is talk to people through that. A lot of people may not know, but um, my experience in my past, I was educated in psychology and I studied psychology in Helena at Carroll College. And so with the psychological background that I have, I understand the cognitive level and the thinking and then also the flight or fight response. And just so you know, um, when I got into psychology, I wasn't into it. I never wanted to be a therapist. It was not what I wanted to do. I love the brain and I love to study the brain. And that is my passion is the brain, how it works. That's why I'm fascinated by terpenes and essential oils and the limbic system. And I love working with autistic children and autistic families and autistic, just autistic people. I think they're fascinating individuals. And when we can, uh, get in there and bounce terpenes off that limbic system and see what happens with those kids is simply amazing. And a lot of those kids suffer from huge amounts of stress because people don't understand them. They want to control them. They don't want to accept them. There's all sorts of those things that happen. So I digress. Let's get back to No Anxiety Tuesday. Um, one of the things I wanted to cover, um, what do you guys want to see first? Let's get some feedback. Do you want to have a little show and tell with some of the books that I use? Um, what are some of the topics you want to cover? Do you want to talk terpenes right now? Because I do have my terpenes with me. I also have my hemp isolate. I was going to blend tonight, but I did not... I'm not going to have that opportunity. Um, I had ordered my little, my bottles that I get, and I'll just, let's just do some show and tell really quick so you guys kind of understand, and I can demystify some of uh, the process and things that happen here. So this, we don't, oh, this is an important part right here. I want everybody to see this, and I'm going to pull one of these out. Um, one of the most frustrating things that I see out there in this industry completely, no matter where you buy your product from, Many of the tinctures that are put out there, they're missing one simple thing. And this makes me crazy. I talk with patients about this all the time. They don't put out a metered dropper. Now, I don't know if you guys can see that. There you go. But you see 0.5 mil and 1 mil. I made it a point when I ordered my bottles to have a metered dropper so that when I am counseling my patient on the other end, my client, I can tell them exactly how to dose themselves. Now, if you don't have a meter dropper, they're looking at a clear dropper and they have no idea what you're talking about. And then they may not be dosing correctly because they're, you know, one full dropper to them could be filling that bad boy up that far when a full dose is the full one mil dose. So, always try to use a meter dropper. Now, to solve that problem, if you do not get a meter dropper in your tincture of wherever you get your products or whatever you're doing, you can buy meter droppers at the pharmacy. You can buy them online from Amazon. Just look up metered dropper or measured dropper, and you can even specify what measurement you want on those. 
So if you want a half mil, one mil, five mil, you can get all sorts of different size droppers. But um, dosing, dosing, dosing is a huge issue. People don't cover enough. They don't talk about, um, they don't prepare for it. And they don't have it set up in their tinctures. Um, another thing um, in this box right here, this is a big thing that I, I keep on hand, whether it's a spiral bound from office deep bottom care, it's the three by five card. And why I say that every patient that I talk to, I'm going to cover up the name here. I make a card for, and I document what their condition is, what we're talking about. And if there's multiple conditions, I also go and I want to know all the different medications that they're on. Um, any medications that they have problems with and also allergies. Uh, when we get into dealing with essential oils and um, these type of terpenes, food allergies can play a big part. And if people have a food allergy, we want to be able to identify that and stay away from anything that may harm them or inflame their allergy. And also, um, I have one client who I can only use avocado oil with. Most all of my stuff, could you hand me the coconut oil there? I use a therapeutic grade um, MCT coconut oil for all of my tinctures. And when I, why I do that is because it does so much stuff. There's met metabolic support. Um, it's virtually therapeutic for people, this oil, to have this oil. Coconut oil is very good for folks. So a majority of my um, tinctures I make with that oil, except for my one client who has been tested for food sensitivities. And because of that, um, with the food sensitivity, she can't have coconut. She's very sensitive to it. So I have to go into uh, avocado oil for her. Now, what's amazing is when I go and do, do her oils and do the different enhancements, I can tell by color which one is which and what I've put in it. Because I, well, it's been over a year now, but um, when I lay them out side by side, you can see the variation in the colors depending upon what, what oils are in there. And so it's, it's pretty amazing to see that. And sometimes it's just, absolutely beautiful to see. Um, I really love mixing and blending with the oils. And so um, let's see, we've covered the cards, we've covered me me measured droppers, another great way of application that I'm huge into and I can make roller balls all night long. Anybody wants a roller ball, you pop it in there. Um, these little bad boys are typically gonna go, this is a five mil roller ball and I'll let those go for $5 with $1 shipping unless we are dealing with like a pain condition and I have to use a higher dollar oil, like my Melissa Blue Tansy, um, Helicrisium, any of those may have to add another dollar to it just for that, but it's not a lot of money. So um, when you consult with me and we work on the essential oils with the terpenes, I do the roller balls. Those are very inexpensive as well. Um, there are people who do not want to get as involved into the essential oils as I have, and that's fine. Um, for the people who want to, there's a great opportunity there, and I invite you to talk to me about it because it's it's just a fantastic thing that uh, a lot of people will be able to um, benefit from. You can share the oils or you can make it into your business. And I do want to say, if there are other healers out there, please, I really want to set up a class with a bunch of healers and have everybody not only learn but coordinate with each other so that we can share our skills and our abilities. So now I do have a question here, which is a great question. Thank you very much, Rebecca. Um, what is a terpene? Well, a terpene is an essential oil of the cannabis plant, a chemical compound actually. And what's amazing is the cannabis plant here, like say basil. Here's an essential oil for basil and it's got terpenes in it. Um, let me go to this little book here really quick. This is a really neat little practice to look at because I want to show you how essential oils and terpenes go beautifully together. So in my little handy dandy little uh, compendium that I have here, I'm going to look up really quick my basil. And I will tell you what terpenes are in here. It's 40 to 80% linalool, cineol, which is eucalyptol, and bergamotine. 
So those are terpenes, which are chemical compounds of the plant and the essential oils. That's where your scent comes from. So when you smell a cannabis plant, anybody who has got to smell cannabis flower, oh, that's, to me, it should be a cologne. It's heavenly. There are people who just drool. And where for years, um, when I first started helping patients pick their meds in Colorado, um, we had great variety. They could walk into a dispensary and the jars were all across the, the, the counters and they could just have a little smell fest going on. So anybody here in Florida may not understand that experience, but um, that's where I learned years ago, the nose knows and the nose is what picks the meds. Out of all the patients that I took into all those dispensaries, not one person spent money on something that didn't smell good to them. If it didn't appeal to their nose, they weren't spending a dime on it. And that's because of uh, the terpene profile and ter terpene content. It's the terpenes in the plant that create smell. Terpene is a big, terpenes are smells. So that's another good way to explain it. A chemical compound, it's a smell. And, um, you know, for years, aromatherapy, as it's been called, has been around for years. And I think by calling it aromatherapy, a lot of people, um, Back in the 60s and 70s, they went, oh, it's a hippie thing. Blah, blah, blah. It's not going to last for long. But you know what? I say it all the time. The hippies were right. They were right about so much. And one of them was also essential oils. The essential oil of the plant is the basic components of the plant. So you can take this basil oil right here. It has very healing properties. Let's just look at that really quick since I've got that one out. And it's very easy for people to... Um, relate to because you can go and buy fresh basil. I love to put ba fresh basil in my uh, caprese salad. <clears throat> Heavenly. So with it being, it's very good in the nervous and reproductive systems as well as the skin. So that's just some of the benefits. And then the other thing that I like, this is one thing that I found that was really cool through um, doTERRA. And they have the doTERRA essential oil chemistry handbook. It's an ebook that's available for everybody for download for free on the doTERRA website. Go to doTERRA.com and look up their ebooks. You kind of have to hunt in the bottom. It's hidden under something under the chemistry thing, but I've been all through that site. But why I love is this little compendium here, which I'll try to link below and get that in there for you guys to have it later. Um, it totally talks about what terpenes are. And this is free, and it takes it down to a layman's terms so that you understand it. So for people who are really wanting to learn about terpenes, go get that little book right there off of the doTERRA website, and it's fantastic. And then also, this is a great book, but it's a, like, I'd call this 400-level terpene class. It's actually a textbook for a chemistry class. So... That's a great book, but if you're not into chemistry, it may not be the book for you. <laughs> but um, yeah, it's, it's a brain bender and it's not cheap either. But um, they talk about the significant structure and biosynthesis of terpenes, which is very important. Hemi, mono, sesquid, di, sester, tri, tetra, and polyterpenes. And it's just amazing to me when I really started studying terpenes and then when I really got into the essential oils and then what I really, really knew about cannabis, I was like, oh my God, it all just so fits together. Just totally. And then, um, which wheel, Terry? The ones in front. Where this one here? Yeah. The oil chemistry wheel? Yeah. Oh, yeah, Terry pointed out something great, too. Thank you. I'm so happy she's there. It's so nice Thank to not be sitting here alone. And I'm not alone. I'm with you guys, so thanks for coming. Keep coming in. Bring your friends. We'll be going for a couple hours, so don't run away. Get get your coffee and your dinner and settle down. Terry and I will be eating later. Um, let me hold these up here so you guys can just look at them really quick. And these are what's in the book. So it'll tell you what oils do what and what terpenes do what? And so this is very important because why? Why is that important? In the cannabis plant, we have over 400 terpenes per strain sometimes. I mean, 
Every different strain is so different. So when people say, what strain works for my pain? I'm like, it's not a strain for your pain, it's a terpene for your pain. And then when we look at what's happened in Florida with our medical marijuana law, our medical marijuana law in Florida took away all flower. So that means that through the extraction process, our terpenes are eradicated. The extraction process destroys terpenes. So we have to give them back. Uh, when you really get into learning about terpenes and that chemistry and what happens with healing and how they bounce off the limbic system and how they're just so beneficial, um, that's when you'll see that we need to add those terpenes back in. They're the signalers for the cannabinoids, and I thoroughly, thoroughly believe that. They signal and they tell the cannabinoids what we want them to do. That's why when people talk about fighting cancer, uh, white widow, when you look up white widow, it's a fantastic cancer fighting strain, and a lot of people really lean on white widow for a cancer fighter. Another one that's out there for cancer fighting, uh, White Widow and Doctor Who. And so uh, greenhouse seeds, if you go to greenhouse seeds and look them up and Google them, uh, they show terpene profiles for all of the strains that they sell there. So you can go and look up the terpene profile of whatever strain you got in your hand there and what works and what you prefer. And you can actually enhance your experience by adding those terpenes to your daily regimen, whether you take them internally, diffuse, or roll them on your skin with a rollerball, a simple rollerball. These guys, um, they're not expensive, and um, your skin is your biggest organ. So that is truly uh, a great way to get meds into your body. And then on top of that, when they test for terpenes in, or when they test for essential oils in the bloodstream after application, they find the essential oils, which I call terpenes, and I cross them over all the time, um, they're found in the bloodstream for four to six hours after application. So, and then I had a question too about does, do terpenes help with psoriasis? And I say, Yes, we just have to find which one. And then be sure that we also have, I really think um, psoriasis is another thing that has another, a lot of issues to do with stress, limbic system, that kind of stuff. So when you can calm down the stress, that'll help keep the psoriasis from coming up. And it's, it's a huge, you know, it's a whole body wellness. And that's a big problem. I talk to people a lot about, um, what's going on in traditional medicine today. Now, I will never beat up our doctors. We need our doctors. There are people who will not see a doctor to save their life, and that's okay for you. It's not okay for everybody, and it's not okay for me. I don't feel that way. I don't believe that. Um, I believe our doctors do have great value, and they need to know what we do. And so when I go see my doctor, I make sure that they know um, I'm a holistic person. I take very little meds. You know, don't come at me telling me you have to give me an antidepressant because I'm depressed. No, <laughs> that's not the first remedy and treatment. And then the other thing I really advise clients to do and patients everywhere is be fully informed and, and you know, don't be afraid to Google stuff. Um, when a doctor tells you something, do not be afraid to challenge them. And one of the biggest things that you need to do when you go in there is take a piece of paper just like this and make a list of all of your questions. And do not get out of that chair and let that doctor leave until you have a check mark by every one of those questions and every one of your questions are answered. That you pay them for their service. So it's very, very important that you get the most bang for your buck. And then also, if they're sitting there and they're just punching through a software program, they're not being a doctor. They're following a software program, and a lot of those software programs are mandated by insurance companies and, of course, Big Pharma to get the most bang for their buck because they don't make money on healthy people. Now, I hate to be so critical, but I've watched what's happened with the medical industry for years now, and I had the same doctor for 28 years. 28 years I had one doctor who delivered all of my children so in my experiences in dealing with him, and by the time he retired, when he retired 28 years after I met him, um, he had been head of the hospital board at the local hospital. So he had went from little bitty doctor doing family practice to head of the hospital, okay? So I watched the progression of uh, the insurance industry and what happened to 
um, not only the billing, but how the office was operated. And then when they got tied to the hospital, what happened there, how records were shared. And I'm watching this whole process going on going, wow, uh, my doctor is a great doctor, but he's not being allowed to be a doctor so much because he's being roped in by the big um, industrial complex. And so by the time he retired, I think he was ready to run and hit the door just because of everything he'd been through himself. But I am one of the few people where when I speak to a room full of people, very few people have had the same doctor for 28 years in their lifetime. That doesn't happen anymore. And I think what happens um, I really miss that relationship because I could talk to him. I could ask him in-depth, candid questions, and I really felt he genuinely cared about me. And that's where I come at things with people. If you don't care about people, don't try to be a healer. Um, you have to care about people in general. You have to care about the population. You have to care about making the world a better place. And if you don't, this isn't your cup of tea. Just don't find another way to be involved. And I'm just saying that from my heart because I've worked with other people who have dealt with healers who weren't in it for the right reasons. And well, they were in it for different reasons. I shouldn't say right or wrong, but um, I just don't feel that people, especially with birthing this new industry and with cannabis and CBD, there's so much confusion with everybody, everybody out there. We need to have, um, valuable, viable, logical conversations. So my gal is over there scribbling me a note and I need to drink the water. Oh, I put my oil away and Marcia always check your lid. <laughs> Barron, um, her internal medicine doctor said that um, essential oils can help for stress and stress relief and suggested essential oils for stress relief and anxiety. Oh my gosh. Okay, we have a comment in here about an internal medicine doctor suggested essential oils for stress relief and anxiety. That You hold on to that doctor. That's awesome. They're doing their homework. And um, here's another thing that's really interesting. I, I just think that's fantastic, but it totally made my brain go off because I know where that question came from, the state that they live in. There are seven states in the nation and Montana, where I came from, happens to be one of them. Uh, those doctors, once they get their medical degree, they are not required to do any, any continuing education by the state of Montana at all. And there's like seven states left in our United States that are that way. So to see a doctor like that who is studying up and actually looking at the holistic thing, fantastic and every time I see a doctor coming that way it just makes my day so that that's awesome news I'm so tickled to hear that um, let's see we have another question how do I get the doTERRA essential oil chemistry handbook I will definitely put that link in this video after we post it after the class so everybody will have access to it you can come back to it share this video when we get out okay and then um, I did want to talk about some essential oil formulations on what I'm working on for some people. I can't blend tonight because um, my bottles, which I'll show you these little handy dandy little loves. I want to demystify some stuff for people too. Because a lot of people are like, oh, I can't do this myself. Or they don't know how to encapsulate something. Um, if you get a medication that tastes really bad, put it in a capsule. Then you don't have to taste it. Simple. And then also, um, if you have an issue, like a lot of times I have people who seriously need to skip the belly acid, a lot of the IBS people, I put them on an enteric capsule where we just jump straight through the belly and through all that belly acid straight into the intestines where we want to go and get rid of all that inflammation that's going on in there. Well, an enteric capsule, let me pull this out here for you. We'll go to capsules first. I buy them 5,000 at a time because I do a lot of capsules and I do a lot of enteric capsules. They are expensive. So shop wisely. Um, the one company I do use is right here, Capsuline. I love them and what they do. They have fantastic capsules. I have never had a client yet coming back to me going, I had a reaction, it was bad or anything like that. And my only complaint is I buy my gel cap separated because it's time consuming to sit and pull capsules apart 
and I can't get these separated. So I put a big E on them because they're enteric, and I want to be sure that these go to the people who need them. Um, I use gel caps as well. And then my gel caps, as you'll see here, these are the tops. Now, I think you can only buy them separated when you buy them 5,000 at a time. I'm not sure if they separate the smaller levels, but I buy my gel caps 5,000 at a time. So there's my tops. There's my bottoms. And everybody's looking at that going, oh, great, there's all those tops and bottoms. How do you do that? Are you holding them one at one? No, no, that would be insane. So the next thing that I do, I have a glass cutting board. And I use this specifically for everything because every time I encapsulate, I clean my area. And this is totally hosed down with rubbing alcohol. My trays, I have encapsulation trays. They get run through the dishwasher, and then I hit them with alcohol, too. Um, I have a lot of cancer patients who are very sick, and I do not want to be making them sicker. That would be my worst nightmare. So, And then also, if you have gut issues or anything, and you're trying to get past the belly and into the intestine, you don't necessarily want to be introducing any more bacteria that you don't have to. So I just try to be as clean as possible. And then um, these are my trays. Um, I do the 100 trays you can buy them in smaller uh, settings these are not for powder this is a holding tray okay now the holding tray I set if you just hold it like this and drop your capsule it's gonna go straight through there that's why I have the cutting board to set it on and then when I line up all my caps in there they're all raised up say that high off of there so I can see in there and I have a little lamp that I keep over top so I can see what I'm doing and you fill up to the line that you can see on the capsule which if you get capsules you'll be able to see that and that's that's how you encapsulate without making yourself crazy so they have smaller trays too I mean if you're I, I do a hundred because usually I'm encapsulating a lot of capsules for a patient and I I do two or three months worth of meds at a time so that's important to me, but you can get 25 and 50 size holding trays as well. Now, please do your homework when you go to buy your tray. There are powder trays too. A powder tray holds a cap and will cap it for you, okay? Does not work with liquid at all. Don't get them confused and then go and use the powder, the capsule uh, the powder encapsulator and, oh, it didn't work. Blah, 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 blah. Well, it's not going to work. It's made for powder. So oils, this is for oils. You don't want to use this for powder. This, I, I've heard of people using this tray, this holding tray, to try to do powder. Well, <laughs> the capsules stick up that far. You're going to have to sit and put powder in every one. Where when an actual powder tray, the capsules sit flush. So you put the powder in the top and then push it across the top and it fills the capsule. And then you tamp it and it shakes it down so you can get all the powder in it that you need. And then you go and you, the tops are in the other part. You put it on there and push it together. And then that encapsulates your powders. And a lot of people I know encapsulate their powders, their herbs, their that kind of stuff. And CBD isolate. This here is CBD isolate. Oh, I love how there's like no weed smell, no grass. It's the devil's lettuce. <laughs> that's what everybody calls it. I just, or, or that's what the opposition calls it anyway. Uh, I have to joke because I just find that hilarious. But let me get that up there and see if you can see it without me pouring it out. It's very pretty white. And I know exactly where this came from. It was grown in Kentucky. That's Kentucky gold there. Although it's white, but that's the name of the, the crop. And I love this company. They grow their hemp to full flower. I have a certificate of analysis on it from the lab, so it's all been tested. That there is 98% pure hemp CBD isolate, and it's good stuff. Um, I've got quite a few clients that I've had on that. I've been sourcing that product now, um, what, a year? year or better. And I actually have a guy in Texas who takes that for his Parkinson's, and fantastic, loves it keeps coming back. So that to me is phenomenal. Um, it's the same product that I use for my anxiety people who were uh, driving down the highway with a hand wrapped around their throat, freaked out and their eyes bugged out. 
I can't, I'm so scared. And I felt so bad for them. But then we get them on that product and it was dynamite. So um, I do want to keep it to No Anxiety Tuesday. We've been doing some show and tell. For those who just came in, we went over capsules. This video is going to go up. We'll be able to come back and view it later. Um, we've got about another mm -hmm. hour and a half to go. So check please. Hashim, to, before you go on, check out Tara Hashim. She really, um, she's really looking for some guidance here. Okay. And, um, let me get back in here and look at some of the comments that are going on too. We, we have some time, so I hope people are okay with hanging out and, um, please, I invite you to hang out, get your coffee. I got my minion cup, bunch of water. And on two hours, I'm staying. Anyway, let's see. What do we want to talk about now? No Anxiety Tuesday. I was getting into formulations, but I wanted to demystify stuff. And so we went through some show and tell. And the one thing I haven't showed you yet is my most favorite is toy in the whole wide world. I love this thing. Do you see that little wooden box anywhere? Oh, it's right there in that basket. This, this, I love science. I'm a science geek. Science geek, I love my little science tools. Okay, let's see. Anybody in there know what this is? Anybody have any ideas? Just from looking at this without me showing you what it is with the name. Can you see anybody? I'm, I'm going to flip it around like this a couple times. Anybody? Don't look at the name. Don't look at what it tells you what it is right there. <clears throat> Probably already told you. <laughs> Anybody have any idea what that is? Besides my favorite toy in the whole wide world. This, my lovely friends, is one of my best friends in my apothecary. It is a Micron magnetic stirrer. And this is how I blend everything that I do. So it's electric, plugs in. I can put a beaker on this plate and boil water. It'll get that hot, okay? Um, I don't, and if you look on here, you'll see I have marks where I, I mark for my heat and try not to go over that line. And I have an external thermometer where I check so I can stay under. I usually try to blend at 180, you know, that way. Um, at that point, I'm not worried about if I'm decarboxylating something, it's already been decarboxylated. And if I want to go at a lower temp, I most certainly can. And if I am going to do that, I most certainly make sure that before I start blending, I have my oil that I'm blending in there at temperature before I put anything in it. So that it's very important. Um, if you're working with an isolate or a resin or something, if it's not activated, you don't want to activate it because the THCA or the CBDA are very critical. And if you heat them over a certain point, there's something that happens that's called decarboxylization. And that is the activation of THC or CBD. That's where it goes from THCA to THC or CBDA to CBD. The heating action changes the chemical composition and activates the compound. So um, that's where the heating part is important. And then also, here's another little nifty this is a requirement to go with that magnetic spinner. Um, these are spinning magnetic spinners. <laughs> these are stirrers, magnetic stirrers. You can get different sizes. Um, I really like the little size, the size magnet stirrer because um, my bottles are 30 mil bottles, so I use a 50 mil beaker. It's all very small and it all fits right on there perfect on that uh, spinner and I can get everything blended beautifully. Um, you, it, nothing is lumpy, nothing is clumpy. It's all absolutely gorgeous. And then when you are blending at heat, you bring it all the way down before you add any terpenes because terpenes are very as it, you know, heat dependent. Um, that's why the extraction process destroys so many terpenes is because it is a heating process. So when you add those terpenes back in, you want to do that at low heat. And I do that all well under 90 degrees. I try to have everything cooling off. And when you use the MCT fractionated coconut oil, um, it winds up doing fantastic because um, the MCT oil has had the fats removed from it that solidify coconut oil. So it never gets hard. So that's a good thing, especially when you're trying to work with that kind of stuff. You don't want to be trying to blend and it's solidifying and then you don't get an even mix. 
And then um, Magnetic Spinner. I'm serious. Um, Amazon. And if anybody ever wants to go and get one, let me know. I'll share my link with you on Amazon. You can go do some shopping. Um, it's not a cheap item, but I won't ever work without one ever again. Ever since I got that a year ago, I love it. As you can tell, it's well used. I've used my burner. It shows it. Um, I just got handed a card. So let me read this since we are doing question, question and answer too. So one of our listeners tonight has an autonomic nervous system dysfunction, anxiety, POTS syndrome, digestive and fatigue flares. Balancing of my nervous system is very tricky. It has also made cell activation and sogrins. Okay, well, I got some more questions about the cell activation and so sogrins. I don't know what that is. Put that in there, what that is, please. I'll go back and read it. But um, one thing... We can definitely go and research a lot of this stuff, which I'm more than happy to talk to you outside of this live video too and do some uh, research on this. Uh, one of the biggest things that I like to do, I have a bunch of books, so as we're doing show and tell, we're gonna show and tell some books too. Because if people want to um, take healing into their own hands, a lot of times a great library is the place to start. And I, this is only a portion of what I have. I'm a total book nut. And I have a huge reference library. So this book right here is one of my favorite ones. It's one of my best ones. Absolutely love it. Great book. And it's also clinical. And so they talk about a lot of stuff in that one that is just dynamite. I got it on Amazon. And a lot of these books are not going to be cheap. Um, this book right here, I absolutely love. Uh, it has so much information in it. Um, I just got this one, the newest edition, and it's 40 bucks on Amazon, hardbound. And it's an absolutely beautiful book and lots of references and recipes as well and a lot of science in there. Love that one. And then this is, oh, these books are so heavy. Um, this is another book that I use in here. And these are a lot of the books that I used to go and research the very conditions like what was brought up here about the nervous system dysfunction, anxiety, that type of stuff. And with the wide variety of oils that I have, we can very well do a lot of research and I can simply get roller balls and, and get some stuff going with roller balls to help you figure out what the issues are without you having to spend a money bunch of money on a bunch of different oils that, you know, until you know that you're really going to get into the oils and love it, I don't want people to go and spend a bunch of money and not like that. Um, I'm really disappointed myself. Can I have that last book right there? Here's my last book for this one. I love this book. The Herbal Medicine Maker's Handbook. It's just, this one is fantastic. So, and all of these I got off of Amazon. So those are great books to have for reference. But these are also the books that I go and look in and I go and research through all of these books and I look online and when we're creating stuff for people, that's also why I want to find out what kind of meds are you on? Because we also research what is a necessary med. When were you prescribed this medication? And it, did the doctor prescribe you that to treat a symptom of another med? Because a lot of times what happens in traditional medicine today is you find out that these doctors are out there <coughs> A patient's on five different meds and three of those different meds are treating symptoms of the other meds. So see the circle and the cycle? Well that's where we got to break it and we can do a lot of that with the essential oils. So let's just say um, nervous system dysfunction is a great... I just love it when people talk about nervous system dysfunction because a lot of times I don't, I'm not happy they have the condition, but they're aware of what is going on. And so when you can even approach it and look at it that way, okay, I got something wrong with my nervous system. What can I do to fix it? That's better than going, well, I don't know. And when you look at a nervous function, nervous system versus um, an immune system versus uh, brain cancer versus all the different conditions, it definitely has to be treated differently. And so when you have a nervous system function, a lot of the oils that I know right off the top of my head are very, very good for that. Vetiver and rosemary are very calming for the, for the nervous system and very calming for the limbic system. 
And that's another thing too, if people go to my blog um, on mymedicineconsulting.com, there's a button on there called Terpene Healer and I've done a bunch of posting on there. I need to get more out there. Um, but I got into talking about the emotional oils with the autistic and that I've had such great success with my autistic kids. It's just been, I have one autistic child that is completely holistic, completely. And we're talking no big pharma meds whatsoever, strictly whatever we formulate with the family and the parents and the essential oils and enhancing her um, formulations with TB, with uh, the terpenes. And so as we're talking about terpenes as well, um, I did want to let people know I have terpenes that I've sourced directly from the cannabis plant. So I have apenine, bepenine, linalool, and these are straight direct concentrates. It's not like uh, basil is 40% linalool. This is 100% linalool. Uh, beta caryophylline, which we're going to talk about beta caryophylline and copaiba and also black pepper before we go today. I, I want to talk to a lot of people about that as well. But back to the terpenes, um, I also have myrcene, which is your big pain terpene. And keep in mind, there's absolutely no THC or CBD in these. They are strictly terpenes. Okay. And then also limonene. So those are the main six that I have. There are a bunch available on the market. If you're going to get into purchasing terpenes, do your homework. There's a lot of synthetics that are out there on the market. I don't like to put anything synth synthetic in or on my body when it comes to these type of oils and these medications. What I was going to mention earlier is before I learned about doTERRA and really turned into the doTERRA absolute bonkers nut that I am, um, I had bought... I have a whole wall full in a, in a shelf of different essential oils that I have since learned were adulterated and I went and looked them up and I actually read on the bottle mixed with coconut oil and I paid how much for that? It's already adulterated, not a pure oil? What? So I have a whole bunch of adulterated oils that I don't even know what to do with because if I diffuse it, that's going straight to your brain. Um, if I put it in my clothes and in my laundry, that goes on my skin. So um, I've even had somebody mention, hey, you can make the toilet water out of it. You know, the poo purry. Well, when you flush the toilet, it goes and gets diffused into the air. <laughs> so I don't know. But um, I don't know what to do with all the oils that I had before because I absolutely won't use them. I, I Not after I learned about certified pure therapeutic grade. And then also I have so, so much better success. Um, my success rate with oils exponentially grew when I went to a therapeutic grade oil. And so that's also why, you know, I have every single oil that they have with doTERRA. I have a whole nother box over here. If somebody needs something, I'm here to help. And I want to make it work and make it right. And I like to have people participate and help with their wellness. So when I do an intake on a person, I really like to talk about what are you doing now? Um, there's a huge brain belly connection that I don't care what you're ailing with, whatever illness you have, you've got to take care of your belly and that in turn connects with your brain and helps with better sleep. And a big part of that is, um, like a lot of my people, one of the first things I talk to them about, what kind of probiotic are you using? Get on a fermented kombucha, get that kombucha going and let's get some good probiotics back into your belly. Because when you take care of your belly, it's going to affect your brain. There's a brain-belly connection and things that happen at night when we sleep with different chemicals and things that go back and forth. And it's amazing when you go Google a brain-belly connection, read up on about it, come back and blow my mind. It's amazing. So follow up on that. But get involved with your treatment. So like when somebody's suffering from anxiety and the no anxiety, I also try to talk them through. Like earlier when we first started this video, I was talking about how define your anxiety. What, where does your anxiety come from? What does it feel like? See, I'm a person who's very, very low anxiety. I, the only time I can really remember having severe anxiety was from social media attack. 
and I don't know if anybody's ever been through that, but that was the one where I was really shocked. But it was, you know, in my everyday life, I am in pretty con good control of everything, and I really don't worry and fret about a bunch of stuff like people do. I see a lot of people, and I really feel for them that really over worry and overthink things, and I think they're trained and brought up to be that way. I it's just from what I've witnessed with a lot of people. And they don't know how to relax or be in control of every aspect or else they think they have to be in control. And that's part of the problem too, is if you're constantly worried that you have to be in control of everything all the time, that's very stressful. And I'm <laughs> pretty fly by the seat of your pants, you know, hey, it takes a lot to shake my box. But social media attack was my huge, I really understood anxiety at that point because you never knew where it was coming from. And people will type things in a post that they won't say to your face. And that to me was very, very painful and why I preach a lot about, you know, be nice to each other. Um, just because I, I don't want to tolerate it myself. And if I see anybody starting that stuff, they're bye bye, gone, don't want you around. So um, that's another big thing too. Um, a lot of people get anxiety from social media. So evaluate your life and your systems and look at what's going on and what causes your stress. If you can't sleep at night, were you just on social media and write a bunch of stuff to get you all fired up and then your brain won't turn off? Well, you're kind of setting yourself up that way. Um, but there are very legitimate cases of anxiety that people can't control and they just come and pop them right in the chops. So CBD is so beneficial for that. And what I really like to do, a lot of my people, we totally microdose it. You start with a really slow dose, low dose, and work up. You don't, there's, there's no reason in the world why somebody should have to come in and be hitting 100 milligrams of CBD a day for anxiety. Um, because eventually what's going to happen is they're going to need more, and they're going to need more, and they're going to need more, and that's not always a solution. Um, I like to microdose, get to a good dose where people are at, and then we can adjust the terpene level and adjust the terpenes. And a lot of times a person can stay at the same dose of CBD and just change the terpene profile that's going on with it to affect relief because we're changing up what's going on inside chemically when we change the terpenes. And terpenes are the terpenes from the cannabis plant and then the CBD or whatever, but also the essential oils. Now, here's something that I really wanted to share with people that a lot of people just don't know. And I, Black pepper, okay, I've helped people quite a few different ways with black pepper. Now, one time I had a healer call me up and she says, I finally had to go to dabs. I wasn't getting high anymore. So I went on to dabs. Oh, my God, it's great. I love it, blah, 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 blah. But I knew how much she loved her flower and smoking a joint, okay? So I said to her, and she lives in a legal state, I said, well, how much pepper are you using on all your food? How much pepper do you eat every day? She says, oh my God, I love pepper. I'm putting it on everything. I put it on my eggs. I put it in my coffee. <laughs> you know, I'm like, okay, found your problem. Black pepper, this wonderful little herb, whether it be an essential oil or the black pepper in your cupboard, blocks the CB1 receptor, stopping the psychoactive effect of cannabis. Um, I have a great story that Irvin loves to tell. Uh, we were back at the Patients Out of Time conference last year in Berkeley. And we were at the after hours party after the whole event was over and all of the leaders from the California industry were there, um, all the doctors and the nurses from Patients Out of Time and the lawyers who had set all this up. And one of the lawyers there, I walk up and this poor fellow's sitting there and he's sitting there with a bucket just gacking his brains out. And I'm like, whoa, what's up with you, cowboy? What, what's What's going on here? And they're like, Oh, he likes Mike's brownies too much, and he's just got to ride that pony. And I'm like, no, he doesn't. They're like, what are you talking about? I said, this is how somebody go get me a half a teaspoon of black pepper and a couple ounces of water. They're like, what? I said, just, just do it, and I'll explain it when you come back. So they take off, and they grab me a couple ounces of water in a little glass, and a half a teaspoon. The finer the grind, the better. And I'm explaining to this lawyer who is gacking his brains out, just miserable. I said, now, you don't have to drink this all, but it's not going to be pleasant. I want you to put this in your mouth and rinse and spit. Rinse and spit. Just spit it in that bucket. Well, 
the gal had brought it back to me. I got him going and he's doing the rinse and spit. And I'm explaining to her how the black pepper blocks the CB1 receptor, stopping the psychoactive effect. And I hear a gulp. It's working. Gulp, gulp, gulp. And he drank the whole glass. And I'm like, okay, right on. I hope that doesn't make you puke. <laughs> And he never did again. It was fantastic. Um, he was right as rain. It, it, within five minutes, he was walking and talking. He did not want to drive because he was comfortably numb, which was his goal in the first place. So he made it to comfortably numb and got rid of the whole puking thing, which was, oh, that was horrible. I hate to see anybody in that position. And then um, on top of all of that, thank you, um, he learned a great lesson on how to fix himself. And I like to share that, you know, when I first uh, did that, um, people were like, why would you want to tell people that? I'm like, because people, it's uncomfortable to be too high. And when we have so many new people coming into this industry, we need to share with them these things. I mean, somebody was coming up with some product I heard of about how to undo getting high. And then there were our can of nurses oh. that were getting sick from that product. So it's as simple as an herb in your cabinet right there black pepper and I've used the essential oil I love this essential oil um, if somebody is way too high you can just have them smell it and I have done this with people who have over dabbed I've seen them went oh boy you walk up and put it right under their nose and next thing you know it's like a smelling salt and it's blocking that receptor and you can see them coming back and it's just fantastic so that's a good way to get away from having to put black pepper in your mouth but if they're really, really, really high, which some people do, you know, with the advent of uh, dabs and people doing high doses internally and eating them and then not expecting the, you know, um, there are people who go and eat a whole cookie because it's so good, they can't resist. And that whole cookie may have 300 milligrams of cannabis in it in certain states or if certain people are making cookies and they don't know how much is in there and they get way too high, they're uncomfortable, they puke and they'll never use it again because of that bad experience. So if we can stop that, help them, and keep them from having that horrible bad experience, I'm going to share all that all day long because it's important to me that people be able to get the meds that they need and take care of themselves. So on that same note, guess what terpene is in black pepper? It's loaded with beta caryophylline. This... This beta caryophylline from the cannabis plant, fully concentrated 100% beta caryophylline terpene. Fantastic. And the thing that's amazing is when you smell the black pepper, I wish we had smell a vision on live channels. Uh, that would be so amazing. But the black pepper is definitely black pepper. But the beta caryophylline to me, I love this one. Don't get it around rubber. It'll eat through a rubber dropper. Don't do that. It's very, huh. it starts out clovey and then goes to a musk. So, mm, God, I love that one. Now, here's another interesting thing that when this came out first with doTERRA, I was like, what? How can you call that a cannabinoid? Now, and I, I actually talked to uh, Dr. Gerdeman about it because I was like, how can they call that a cannabinoid? And he says, um, there's a certain flavor of scientists that is starting to believe now and profess that anything that acts on a CB receptor would therefore be a cannabinoid because it affects and works on a CB receptor. So one thing that is very amazing is copaiba, which is a tapped essential oil from a tree, 65% beta caryophylline. When this came out with doTERRA and Dr. Hill was saying, you can replace CBD, I'm like, what? No way. And I still don't believe you can replace CBD, but the health benefits of this, pretty much every formulation I make of everything, I put copaiba in it. So uh, I buy my limit every month. I can only buy one. <laughs> I was buying kits to stock up and get ahead of things, and I have other people buy me copaiba. <laughs> So it's important to me that I keep that out there. I even put five drops of that in my dog's uh, gallon Just water thing. Every time I refill, my doggies are getting copaiba. I haven't put it on the gerbils yet, but maybe. And so I have another question. Um, does black pepper block any EO effect? And I'm assuming that means essential oil effect. And I have not heard of that yet. Um, we're blocking a receptor not an oil. 
and all the different oils work on different receptors or the same ones or when you look at a chemical compound of what these oils are they have different sizes and different ways that they attach when you get into receptor science and looking and seeing how receptors are activated and how they work um, so all these different chemical compounds let me just flip to this book really quick because I love all of the descriptions you'll see here they show all how all the different structure see the structure well when you get into looking at the structure of the different terpenes that's basically really how they work on the receptor sites and how they're accepted too it's their, that structure that allows them to go into this area or not go into this area or be received by this area or not be received by that area so a lot of the receptor science is on or off, on or off, on or off. And that's what these are doing is turning a receptor on. It's activating it or blocking it. So that's how, that's just basic layman's terms. There's so much more to it. I mean, if you want to become a chemist, go for it. We really need people in chemistry that are totally into this whole herbal thing. That would just be fantastic. And oh my gosh, I'm, I'm working on it because I'd like to read a lot of the chemistry stuff. So... Um, we're an hour in. I hope nobody's bored yet. No? Are we having fun? Uh, I hope so. I am. I really am loving it. And I'm so happy to have my girlfriend, Terry, here. Thanks, Terry. Love you. And she's helping me. Mm. I have water. Thank heavens. Um, hydrate, hydrate, hydrate every day. So now I wanted to talk about and look up some of these oils here, too. On... Um, no anxiety Tuesday. Um, oh, one other thing before I head into this book and we talk about anxiety, because I'm going to pull a lot of here out of here on this. I want to put out here Clary Sage. I want people to look up Clary Sage. And if you have somebody who is sick from cancer, Clary Sage, if you can't afford any oil but Clary Sage, you get them on Clary Sage. Call me, ask me how, we'll take care of it. I, I'll probably do a class in the future on just Clary Sage, but um, or on cancer fighting, because I have a whole cancer fighting formula. But it's very important to me that people understand uh, Clary Sage promotes apoptosis. Apoptosis is cancer cell death. So when you have an essential oil where it's documented scientifically with scientific research that clary sage essential oil promotes apoptosis we definitely want to be on clary sage essential oil and please i don't care if you get it from me or not but get a doTERRA clary sage oil i'd prefer if you got it from me of course but if you have a family member that sells it i don't care don't don't not get it because of the fight of who you're going to get it from just get it and get it in that cancer patient, okay? It's huge. It's very, very important. So, some of the things that are very good for anxiety, and I'm going to go a little further than what they even say here, they talk about lavender and wild orange in this here big book. Okay, now lavender, um, one thing I want to have people be aware of, lavender, for some people, can go either way. For a majority of the people out there, lavender is very calming. And it will work very well for calming people down and also helping with anxiety. But um, a lot of people uh, diffuse lavender into their kids' bedrooms at night, and that's how they put their kids to sleep, is they fog them with lavender because it settles and calms down and gets that limbic system all leveled out. And that's also how it helps with anxiety. But in a very small amount of people, the opposite happens, and lavender can excite them. So be sure if you are fogging your kids that you check on that and be sure that all the kids are settling down with it and not um, getting excited because you don't want to ever send your kid to bed all amped up. So um, double check that, but it's a very small part of the population. And then if that does happen, what I recommend that you try on the other side of that is spikenard. Spikenard is another form of um, lavender that is on the opposite 
it's really on the opposite profile. But people talk about a French lavender and blah, 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 and all of that. Well, spikenard is the opposite of that. So you can use that for that. Um, vetiver, let me go look up my vetiver here. Actually, I'm going to move over this book. And write these things down too, because if you're form, if you if you're getting a tincture from me, which I see a couple people out there are on here that uh, are and have paid for their tinctures, um, I really definitely want you to be involved in your treatment. And if you see an oil or learn of an oil or something that you want in there, I want to get that added in there before I formulate or before the next bottle. So, oh, and here is a wonderful chart. Let me share this with you guys. This is one that I used when I first started really getting into the terpenes, and it's from Leafly. So if you go to Leafly and look up their terpene chart, what you smell equals how you feel, identifying common cannabis terpenes. This is a great chart that really shows, oh, let, me, let me get back over here and show you this one here with the panine. I love panines. They're so piney. So there's your alpha panine, um, pine, it's found in pine, dill, parsley, basil, and rosemary. See the rosemary, parsley, basil? Mm -hmm. Panines are in there. Um, alertness, euphoria, creativity, memory, and retention. And it's also used for asthma and analgesic. And then down at the bottom, it shows you what strains are in there. So this is just a great little chart that tells you what what's what and so you can find that at leafly.com and what was the one thing i wanted to look on here linalool linalool is no anxiety tuesday linalool is your terpene linalool is your anxiety relief and sedation and that is what is found in um lavender and it's also found across the spectrum in quite a few of them um, another one I know for a fact, it's got to be, and let's look at Melissa. A lot of my anxiety stuff, I really think I'm going to put in a drop of Melissa in every one of them. Melissa officinalis, I think is what it is. Melissa officinalis. And um, this one is loaded with myrcene as well. But it's also very, very good for calming and anxiety. Now, Melissa is also not a cheap oil. But, you know, if it works, it's worth it. And if you can get it a drop at a time from me, I'm happy to help you. So, Melissa, here it is. It's $1.35 a drop. One drop. And that's actually... Um, probably low because that was before I did those calculations it's probably more like a dollar 80 a drop so it's pretty pretty um, not not a cheap oil but here's the primary benefits that I find very beneficial and where it really helps people and I've actually heard of other doTERRA people taking just one drop of this at a time sublingually under their tongue daily so if I can uh, infuse that into an oil and help people with the CBD, I'm down for it. But it helps support a healthy immune system, calms tension and nerves, which is a big deal, and it promotes feelings of relaxation. So I, that's why I really do like the Melissa oil for that. Now also I want to look up vetiver and rosemary while we're in here. And anybody who wants to look along, you can go to the doTERRA.com, D-O-T-E-R-R-A.com, website and look up any of these oils on their website and when you click on the oil it'll take you to an information page and when you scroll all the way to the bottom there's a PIP in a video the PIP is the product information page it's in this book that I'm looking at right here so you have access to all those same information that I have right here when you're doing your research and your homework and I really encourage people you know I'm teaching a class here but you're here because you want to learn so don't ever be afraid to research, look things up, and challenge. And by gosh, if you find something that's, oh, hey, wait, Heidi, you were wrong on that, let me know. This is all a whole brand new world for everybody with the whole cannabis and terpenes and blah, blah, blah. There's so much research that's still coming out. And if somebody is a better researcher than me, 
throw it down, please bring it on. Hey, I'm happy to work with people. I think it's great. I love to have challenging conversations like that. And where we talk about something that's not politics. <laughs> I'm sure you get what I mean there. <laughs> now, when we go and look at Rosemary, I love Rosemary myself as a primary, um, but Rosemary is a big one also for helping to reduce nervous tension and occasional fatigue. So Rosemary is a great one for, um, it's got eucalyptol, apenine, and camphor. So your apenine is in there, and that's your, let's go get them energizing. And then also another thing that was really awesome that I loved is when I was writing my terpene healer blog on mymedicineconsulting.com. Please go read that. Um, mymedicineconsulting.com, click the terpene healer button right up there, okay? Right up there in the upper right-hand corner. And at the very beginning of my blog where I welcome people, there was a fantastic video I just loved where they were talking about terpenes and how they are studying terpenes in the pine trees of Colorado Springs, Colorado. And what they are doing is they are studying how the terpenes and the panines affect um, water and seeding of clouds and creation of clouds. And when I first saw that video, I was like, wow my brain exploded because that was when I was all into my terpene this, terpene that, blah, 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 and really just getting into learning about the terpenes. And I saw that and my brain just imploded when they're talking about seeding of the clouds and how important that is. And when you think about it, you know, after I've talked about what a terpene is and it being a scent, terpenes around us every day, every day, everywhere we go, we are surrounded by them. You can't step outside without getting smacked in the face by a terpene, especially if you're in Florida, there's plants everywhere. And even in the winter, those pine trees are putting out terpenes. They may be frozen, but that sun shines on them and warms them up just enough and you still get that piney smell in the forest. So terpenes are everywhere in our everyday lives. Now we just need to learn how to harness their power and use them to our benefit. And that's what I'm all about and what we're trying to do here. So no anxiety Tuesday, we're still carrying on with that. We looked up rosemary. And then I also want to look up vetiver because vetiver is a fantastic one that a lot of people, I, I don't know that they know about it, but it has calming grounding effect on emotions, which is a big deal. And then also immune supporting properties. So. Immune support, immune support, immune support, I also think is a very big deal that a lot of people um, don't focus on. When, when you can support your immune system and keep it as strong as you can keep it as possible, it really makes it a lot better to go and fight disease. So, <coughs> pardon me, you want to keep working on that uh, immune system all you can and take things that support it every day. And that's also something that we can put in these CBD tinctures when people want to get a tincture. Or even if you don't want CBD in it, I make tinctures for people that, oh my gosh, my cancer fighter doesn't have a lick of CBD in it. I made um, all these capsules that are loaded with terpenes, the cannabis terpenes, as well as frankincense, myrrh, clary sage, lang lang, and copaiba. And then with all of those, I blended the, all of those together and that goes into my um, cancer fighter formula, which I have little capsules that I give to people because then that way they can take that, whether no matter where they are, I can ship it to them and around the country. And if they're using cannabis in their own state, I'm giving them their terpenes. It doesn't matter. I can add those terpenes in for them and help them to fight their cancer. And um, like with my autistic family and my autistic kids, a lot of these essential oils, the um, emotional oils, which I'm going to grab the wheel pretty quick here. I've got a great poster for that. But like this little one here, passion, we have passion, cheer, forgive, balance, console. Um, console is a great one for people who are suffering from grief and um, grief or loss, some kind of pain of any kind. Console is a fantastic oil for that. I, I'm going to be loading up with that one. I just love that one. But um, where is our poster? I think I have it right here. Hang on a minute. Any questions out there? I don't see Terry writing me any questions down from you guys. <laughs> oh. 
I want to see more questions. We're hour and 15 and we got 45 minutes to go. I hope you're not bored and leaving me yet. And if you come and watch it later, I hope you're not fast forwarding through. Um, <laughs> this is our emotional set of oils. Let me get this positioned right. So you guys can see the wheel. And the emotional oils are just dynamite. Um, and this wheel is also available at the doTERRA website. And if you look up emotional oil wheel, um, you'll find it out there online. Just look for images. But the emotional oils, a lot of people don't think about dealing with the emotions as well. And especially with anxiety, you can look at these little wheel right here and approach your anxiety with an oil and smell it right there on your skin immediately. Now, one thing that I've done before, and I'm, I'm always going to offer it, is those emotional oil set. If people don't want to go to get the emotional oil set right off the bat, it's like $159 for the kit. But I make my 5 mil roller balls like I showed you guys. Anybody who wants those, they're $5 a piece. And I blend for you and relabel in a 5 mil bottle for $5 a piece all those essential oils for the emotional. Now, especially if you are suffering anxiety, I would really encourage you to add these emotional oils to your daily wellness treatment. Because I think you'll find it very comforting, and I know other people who find it very comforting to be able to go, and they can use the cheer, they can use the forgive, the passion. They, it actually helps them to identify some of their emotions that are going on at the time, too, so that they can deal with them. Because a lot of times, some people just flat out can't identify what emotion is eating them at the time. When they think they could be mad and it's frustration and frustration causes madness but yeah it's, it's just they can all blend together sometimes so they have problems with that but um and if you're dealing with people who are not communicable they can't talk like a lot of the autistic clients that i've dealt with over time um a majority well and i shouldn't say majority because there's a lot of great kids that can communicate but let's say a portion of them are non-communicative they'll ask you for an oil they will go straight to that kit if you have a kit like this where you keep your rollers in if you're bonkers about them like i am all of my oils that i use daily i keep in my little kit in my purse and everywhere that i go and um They'll come up and they'll ask you for that oil because they know that they need it. And that's a way of self-treating where they're treating their limbic system and trying to calm things down. And what happens when you get into my blog and you see what happens with the autistic kids and their limbic system and what's going on with all of that stuff, um, it's amazing to see how they can choose an oil and treat it right there and just calm down immediately. Um, I had another little guy up in... Uh, uh, New Jersey who working with his mom and oh, uh, they were all of these special needs families I'm telling you guys um, they go through so much and they wind up just like practically destitute half the time trying to fight and save their kids and work on it and uh, I'll tell you what that mom she has done such a great job with that little kid but uh, working on with her and getting the essential oils going that was the first thing we had to do with him was because it was the best treatment that she could get her hands on and it worked and they have really been doing a lot of behavior modification with him with essential oils and he will come and ask for a specific oil at a specific time and she just here go ahead son and it's amazing because it helps those kids to identify and anybody who works with them should understand you know they're very sensitive to scent and even scents, sounds all sorts of different things can be very perplexing or stimulating for them so that's where we want to watch for that stuff so um, I have a question here is there a difference if you incorporate essential oils with the edibles and is the terpene as effective I would say it depends on the edible and the heat involved that's part of the problem um, if you're baking which I know which Robin this is. You're baking, and I know what kind of goodies you like to make. The only problem is, is your oven heat's going to bake it off. So I'd be sure and watch for the um, oven temperature, and you can also look up what the heat point is for individual terpenes. So 
you can find out what level your frankincense is going to burn off. She made cannabis lavender almond brownies today. Like, oh, oh cannabis <laughs> lavender almond brownies. <gasps> Oh, you're killing me. I told you I know what she makes and I've had those goodies before and I um, remember. <laughs> but I would maybe try to, you know, if you're really trying to get medication into a person that way with a baking, maybe uh, we'll definitely check your heat point. Adam, definitely, you know, Adam when you can. And look at frosting. If you're doing goodies like that and you're adding a frosting, mix it into the frosting. Then you get the pop on that. And um, really look at your lemons and wild oranges too. Those are great ones to use and get in there. And um, lavender is just fantastic for calming. And could you imagine, um, I actually made, I finally made a tincture. Irvin had had a tincture in Montana years ago and he just raved. It was the best one he's ever had. Nobody has ever touched it since. <clears throat> I finally did it. And how I beat that other tincture was strictly with my essential oils. And it was actually my cancer fighter formula. Frankincense, myrrh, clary sage, uh, copaiba. And I love to throw Lang Lang in there because it's just good stuff and it elevates the person and it makes them very happy. And a lot of times these people, anybody with an illness is suffering. So many people are suffering. We need to stop the suffering. So even if you can add that little bit of happy with the Lang Lang, um, that to me is a big deal. And when it elevates those people and can bring them that little bit of peace and make them laugh, that that's a big deal. I think it's really important that laughter be added to everybody's day. If it's not, I mean, laughter is truly the best medicine. I'm a firm believer in that. So I really try to bring that to every day with my, uh, how I live every day and what I do. Ask her, I'm always poking him, poking him, trying to make him laugh. So. Um, one other thing I forgot to show you guys in show and tell that saves a lot of time. These are my best friend. And what these are is these are actually a three mil pipette. So you squeeze it and that's how you dry your oil up and drop it in your capsules or wherever they're going into. So this is fantastic. This is just great. And they're cheap. You get like 200 of them for $8.99 on Amazon. So um, the pipettes, I, well, I forgot that in show and tell, but I wanted everybody to see those because people struggle with doing things. I want to make it simple and demystify how to do all this stuff so people can help themselves and help each other. And, and the more people that we have helping everybody else, the more people are going to be healthy and the better world it's going to be. So we're boiling down to, we've got about half an hour left. Um, I think I have the capability to bring people on here maybe. Let me look. If anybody wants to come on, raise a hand or something or message me. Let me see if I can. I don't know if I can or not. I've never got to try it. I've invited people to do it, but everybody's usually chicken. <laughs> And I don't see how to do that. Maybe they took it away. Facebook has gone through some stuff. Or maybe you can only do it on your phone. But anyway, um, any more questions in there? Um, and then also, uh, please don't expose personal information you don't want anybody else to see in the comments. And if you have already, just go and delete them. I'm not going to go and um, share it out there worldwide. But this is a public video. And so other people will be able to see all of this stuff that is going on. So please be sure, um, message me privately with anything that is very private. I don't want you guys exposing yourselves and putting out um, information that, uh, your personal information out there. I don't want anybody getting beat up or sharing anything that they don't want out there. So let's see. Hey, we got a couple more people coming in. Oh, yes, Rodney. I'm going to bring up exactly what Rodney had to say. He says, exactly. 95% of essential oils in the U.S. are adulterated with fillers and contaminants. I found that out the hard way. doTERRA are used in hospitals now because of their purity and potency. Regular store-bought oils are not the same as food-grade medicines. He's exactly right. And you're welcome, Rodney. 
Hopefully we'll have more classes every week. I do want to have more people sitting here in the seats, you know, um, in the class. I, I would really like to have more of that interaction. I do love to have the Facebook Live video, but I really want to focus on helping some people directly in person too. And then if you guys really like and want to have the Facebook Live videos, we'll figure out how to keep them going. Um, keep in mind, everybody who, when you get your tinctures from me, that helps me to do this. So, because I have to pay for my room here and all of that kind of stuff to be able to come and have a class. So, I have a question. Please explain the limbic system and how do terpenes enter and act with it? Okay, that's a great question. Now, I am going to go right on here to my phone where I can show you guys. And anybody who can go... Um, you may have to go later, but if you're double timing like me and you can, um, I've got my laptop and my phone. Let's just go to mymedicineconsulting.com and go to Terpene Healer. See right there? Okay. So when you get on there, let's scroll down. Oh, Emily, most certainly. Um, we scroll all the way down. We're talking about the limbic system and how terpenes get in there. And right here on this page, I'm going to show you this. The limbic system is the big part of your brain involving your amygdala, the hypothalamus, the thalamus. Can you see all of that? And when you look it up, you'll see it's your major brain system. And it controls a lot of your thoughts, emotions, your flight or flight response, all of that stuff. And so that's why we try to focus on the limbic system when dealing with the autistic kids, because this is a lot of times where the puzzle pieces are missing and the wires aren't connecting is in the limbic system. That's why you see the repetitive behaviors, um, the lack of communication, the distance, and how they withdraw. It's a lot of the activity that happens right here in this. So when you get to MyMedicineConsulting.com, you'll see this is all in here on that blog under Terpene Healer. And the limbic system starts with your olfactory. So diffusing, when you diffuse your oils, you're diffusing into the air fine particles of essential oils. And that will go straight into your limbic system through your sinus cavity. So you're hitting your limbic system. When you open this bottle and take a big old whiff, you're dosing yourself and you're hitting your limbic system. Okay? When you go out and you smell a flower, you're hitting your limbic system. And that's also why I don't like unadulterated oils being diffused in my house because it's going straight into my limbic system. And that's why toxic chemicals from cars out on the road, it's going straight into your limbic system. Okay? So keep that in mind, and that's where you want to do the, um, you know, be sure you're detoxing yourself as much as you can, drink as much water to cleanse and purge. Um, your body has fantastic filtration systems. Keep everything healthy so that you can allow them to work properly and function and let the great machine um, work and do its job. Now, I had a request on here about demonstrating the hand inhaler, and I think this is, very important. Um, thank you for that suggestion, Emily, too. I really appreciate it. Um, at one point, a few months back, you know how they have all those ads on Facebook you're scrolling by and you can't pass them. They're just there. And it's like, well, I'm scrolling by one. I'm like, what? Vape pens for essential oils. I was like, you're at, you're kidding me. Right? Really? Lav I'm gonna Lavender vape pens. And they had people vaping lavender. Okay, I would do that with doTERRAs, okay, but um, you don't have to vape it. You have a natural inhaler right here, and that's what I'm going to show you right now. Um, I've got doTERRAs. I love their breathe, and as you can tell, I kind of got some stuff going on anyway, and I've been kind of coughing a little bit. So you take one drop, one drop. Slowly, slowly. Yeah, just be careful. <laughs> Some of these oils pour really fast. Like your frankincense, you can just dump that right out of there. And the myrrh is like, shake, shake, shake. Okay. <laughs> um, breathe is one that comes out fast. So, And one drop is really all you need for this. So you see I got one drop on this hand. 
Whatever, you can't see it now, but you rub that in there like that, okay? And you got it on your hands, on your palms. Go like this, fist in your hand, cup it, like this. That's your inhaler right there. It's fantastic. You can control the uh, amount of pressure and how far you drive it into your lungs by how you release, you know, just practice. But please, only one drop at a time, okay? You can really overdo it, especially with stuff that are the blends, like breathe. Um, I had somebody the first time they tried that, they went and had like four or five drops, and I'm like, oh, no, no, no. And they were like, <coughs> I'm like, yeah, you overdosed yourself. You can overdose yourself on essential oils. So please, always read up, dilute, and read through your book, study, and I'm an animal nut, and I just have to say this. Anybody out there who has animals, sorry, i got to do this one more time, too. Oh, that's so awesome. You want some? Here, hit, hit it. <laughs> but anybody with animals, and I can't, do, I can't stress this enough, our little furry friends, I know I treasure mine. When you diffuse, eucalyptus, is it eucalyptus or melaleuca? I'd have to look again. Deadly for cats. It's eucalyptus because people use it in their shower too. Um, do not diffuse eucalyptus steadily in your house for days. You can kill your cat. Okay? There are other things that aren't good for your pets. Google it. There are people out there who specialize in veterinary care with essential oils, and they have a lot of blogs out there about what's toxic and what's not. And especially since I... Um, I don't know if you know it or not, but you should by looking at my wall. I'm a member of the American Gerbil Society, and I have my gerbils. And so now that I have all those little furry guys trotting around in there, um, I really have to be careful because if you think about it, okay, the chuggies are one thing, and they're a bigger animal. They weigh 25 pounds. Little gerbils, they're ounce, they're grams. They're they're not even 100 grams. Well, you go and hit them with an oil, you can drop a gerbil easily. So, you know, really be careful when you're diffusing and pay attention to what you're doing and look at what's toxic to your animals so you don't wind up taking your animal to the vet. Now, that's essential oils and terpenes. Regarding cannabis treatment and the endocannabinoid system, your animals, yes, treat them. Um, most certainly treat them. Always remember black pepper. You can block their receptor with black pepper just as easily as you can a human. Um, but with them, you know, it's a little different. you got to pour it over their gums to be sure that it gets in there. And then um, they have an endocannabinoid system, and I beat a tumor on my dog's leg with RSO treatment added directly to the tumor, and I beat it in a very short period of time, and it has not come back. So we can treat our furry friends. And there are also, I didn't bring that book, but maybe I'll bring it. I'll do a cancer class and I'll bring, it, bring in my drawing salve book. I have a book about drawing salves, and a lot of the drawing salves are just amazing to me. And with some of these um, cancers that are uh, on the dermis and the skin cancers, um, some of those can be drawn out with drawing salves. And in that drawing salve, you can add your CBD or THC as well to help fight that cancer excise it better with the drawing salve plus heal the skin so it's not so damaging um i have we've got to do a cancer a cancer class but i have a, a gal that i met who is in ireland and um she excised her breast tumors with a drawing salve I have video documentation of it all it was amazing she walked in set her tumor down on her doctor's desk and said test it and he was like what but she had uh, drawn it out with a black salve and when I was talking to her she was going through some of that treatment with herself and treating herself and I was like you have to document this oh my god and so she got her blog going but um, it was amazing and if she could have gotten her hands on cannabis I really think she would have went through a lot less pain than she did because the blood root salve that salve that she used was a very painful method but um you know, when people are fighting for their lives and they've got, you know, or am I going to go through some pain to get there? And she didn't want to take a bunch of meds or go through the chemo. Um, she really believed in her treatment and being able to draw it out the way that she did. And she's alive today because of it and still helping other people. So to me, that's a hugely incredible story. 
And um, when I do a cancer class, I'm definitely going to share Anne's story that she's public with it and has it out there. So I'll definitely get that out there for people. So um, <laughs> I just, <laughs> what amazes me is that you can easily say beta caryophylline. <laughs> Lots of practice. <laughs> that was funny. Thanks. Kara wants to know what oils can CBD prevent cancer? What oils are cancer? -free? What are cancer preventative? Well, for one, I don't think about a dose of clary sage every day. I'd take a drop of clary sage and in an internal gel cap every day as preventive medicine. I would make my own little cancer fighter. And, um, my cancer people, I tell them no matter what, even if you beat your cancer, when you beat your cancer, you still need a daily dose of your cannabis plus these essential oils. And there's frankincense, myrrh, clary sage. Those are the main animals. And so if they're going to work to fight cancer, they're also going to work to prevent it. So, but the clary sage with the apoptosis, that that to me is huge. And when if you go to PubMed, I like to do a lot of my research on PubMed as well with the scientific articles. Go look up clary sage apoptosis and start looking up some of the essential oils. And then when you get into the essential oils, um, let's just go look at the clary sage right now because I'll tell you right now, it's got linalool in it. And um, I'm pretty sure linalool is their main component on clary sage. Yep, linalool. So um, that main component, linalool, I would stick with any essential oils that are loaded in linalool for cancer fighting just by deducting and deductive reasoning is what I'm using with that because I don't have scientific evidence. And that's, you know, we can research. I do have, you know, a few stories or scientific research regarding clary sage promoting apoptosis but quite honestly with the cannabis and CBD industry the way that it is until we have lab sampling and lab testing and where we can go and test and do research with our patients and test blood and see what those levels are and really work on dosing and see what dosing is at it's all trial and error there is no concise answer people metabolize things at different levels um, I had a guy fighting leukemia in Colorado. Oh, he's still alive today, and I love him to death, Bob Cross. Um, we had to fight for his life there, not just for his life for um, fighting the leukemia, but he was also under prosecution for being a patient. <laughs> oh, yakky Bob. <laughs> he he loved the plant so much. He was making barbecue sauce. Want to make sure everybody in Colorado Springs, Colorado had his barbecue sauce. So um, that's what kind of alerted the local PD to him. And <laughs> it was a long battle, um, but Bob prevailed and he won. And that was back in 2011, 2012, when we were fighting Bob's case. So um, I've done a lot of the advocacy as well um, to help fight for patients to have the right for this plant. And I'm a very, very firm believer. I will never, ever, ever stop. And also, that's another reason why um, any of my sales, if you put down uh, normal Florida, say anything about normal of Florida, regulate Florida on your purchase with uh, PayPal, which is in my other link, and I'll be sure and get it linked into this after we post it. Um, if you want a tincture, PayPal me, message me, um, but please be prepared for a phone call. Um, I really like to do an intake on my patients. They are custom formulated tinctures. Uh, I'm not just throwing stuff together. I really want to dial it in for you and help you, not a ten, 20 people. So, you know, I ask a lot of questions. Some of them can get quite personal, but I've dealt with a lot of people on a medical level, so I know how to handle that and do it appropriately without embarrassing people. I think that's very important that people always maintain their dignity. And being sick is no fun for anybody. A lot of people, they get tired. It's really hard to be sick all the time. And so we've got to find a way to try to get around that, elevate the mood, get people happy again, find out why the happy receptor isn't turning on and try to flip that switch. Because, you know, even if we can find just a little bit of happiness every day, um, that really helps with healing in our mental wellness. 
you know, everybody talks about physical wellness. Well, mental wellness is a big part of it. And that's where anxiety, no anxiety Tuesday, that's a big deal to me. I could not believe before I got into this industry how many people really suffer from anxiety and don't know how to deal with it or don't have appropriate coping skills for it. Um, and, and I don't know how to give them mine. Uh, <laughs> I've really been able to handle stress and a lot of stress um, very well and a lot of trials and tribulations in my life. And um, I feel like I'm doing okay. I mean, I'm not Joe Rich person down on the street driving a Maserati, but that isn't what I want to be either. You know, I want to be happy. I want to be healthy. And I want all my friends to be happy and healthy. And I want to be surrounded by people who are happy at least. And if they're not, I'm going to try really hard to make them happy somehow or, or help them change it up to get there. And then for the people who are just terminally unhappy, there's a lot of those out there too. And I just, I don't know what to do for those people. Um, soak them in the oil. I don't know. <laughs> Have a vat of cheer. <laughs> So those are some of the struggles and the trials and the tribulations. So I can't believe we already made it an hour and 40 minutes. Can you believe it's an hour and 40 minutes? Is, is anybody bored yet? We still have people hanging around. Thanks for staying. I really appreciate it. That means a lot to me. And so um, let's see, what other goodies did I bring? I brought a lot of goodies today. Like, we had to load the entire wagon and bring it up from the car. Um, anybody watching today, do you guys want an essential oil roll-on? Be sure you go and uh, message me if anybody does. Um, I'm going to try and look at some of the comments here really quick. Terry's in there hassling you guys. I love it. Give him a hard time, Terry. And I keep thinking this is a touch screen, and it's not. It's supposed to be. Oh, co-pilot lovers are everywhere. <laughs> hey, Robin, thank you. <laughs> She's like, when are you coming home? <laughs> hey, Robin, I'll be home in August. No, Grace is asking me that. <laughs> oh, <laughs> my daughter's asking when I'm going to be home. Uh, after my show. Um, I don't think I can get you in split screen here, Robin. I would love to, you crazy wild woman. I asked her to show how. It's not showing me how. Let's see. It says invite friends. <laughs> Tasha wants oh, to that's know. just to invite him to watch. Tasha wants to know if the new CBD does it relax you to the point of being unproductive. Um, no, CBD does not relax you to that point. Um, it can if I add a ton of lavender. And some other things to like knock you down. I actually have two formulations I'm doing for some people close to me here in town. Um, lots of anxiety going on. They've had a lot of struggles in their household. And so I'm making them actually a daytime formula and a nighttime formula because they really have a hard time sleeping at night. It's a couple. And one of them wakes up in the middle of the night because everything is so heavy on their brain, they can't turn it off. Well, when they get up, it wakes up the other person, and then they're both up, and nobody's getting any sleep, and then they're, oh, they're fighting at each other because nobody's getting any sleep. So um, that's actually where I'm going to be working on a formulation to really knock somebody down with some CBD. And, you know, they were like, well, should we have any THC? Do you have any of that? I'm like, well, I can help get you into the Florida program, but until then, and actually... For anxiety, THC is not your answer. CBD is your answer with anxiety. THC can actually cause more anxiety. And I don't think a lot of people realize that. It's the psychoactive effect that can cause the paranoia, which will bring on more anxiety. So if somebody is naturally anxious already, you want to throw gas on that fire? Probably not. Now, there's a lot of people I've heard of who already are smoking and treating their their anxiety with the with the THC, and if it works for them, fantastic. But there's a huge part of the population who absolutely don't touch cannabis whatsoever because it increases their anxiety. And that's where, if we can treat that with a CBD and get everything calmed down, you know, maybe one day they'll be able to use the THC, which I hope everybody does one day. I mean. 
Um, I am totally for full on legalization and reform. It's the only way we're going to have access for people all across this nation. And everybody should have opportunity to grow this plant like I have. When I was in Montana and I was a carded patient, I had my garden. I was not a good grower by any means, and I'm not even going to wear that pin, but I loved growing that plant. It was the most, I've said it ever since I popped my first seed. The only thing addictive about cannabis is growing it. And I sincerely believe that. I have been without cannabis myself for months and I've been fine. I've never suffered withdrawal. I believe there is a very strong emotional addiction and an emotional addiction is very different than from a physical addiction. When people talk about addiction, when you say addiction to me or any other people, what they generally envision is withdrawal symptoms, tremors, sweating in the hots and the sweats, and you know what you see when people are coming off of meth. And that is what addiction is, okay? And that's where you have withdrawal symptoms. People don't have addiction like that with marijuana. It doesn't happen with cannabis, not with CBD. It's not possible. It doesn't happen. What happens is an emotional addiction. And I've found that myself, where when I was without for a long time, whether it be by choice or by not, it was very emotionally painful for me. And with another client I had to deal with, which that's a whole other topic we're going to talk about on another show one day, um, they actually had to stop using cannabis because they had cannabis hypermeresis syndrome. And to this day, it's horribly painful for that person to not have their plant they love so much. And they're fine without it. They're doing good, but they miss it every day. And I get that. It's a friend, you know. And when I had to finally look at this person and say, it's not your friend. It's really not your friend anymore because we had deduced it and figured it out. That was a big deal. So I have another question. What's the difference between CBC CBD. or CBD and cannabis? Well, the big difference between CBD, we'll just call it CBD and THC, because honestly, they're both cannabis, if you look at it. They are the cannabis plant, but different strains and varieties. So um, CBD comes from industrial hemp, and it's found very limited in marijuana, a, a.k.a. cannabis with full THC. And here's a little story for you. A lot of people don't understand what happened and how... Um, Cannabis, years ago, before the modern-day grower got a hold of it, used to have high amounts of CBD in it. CBD is a component of the cannabis plant, and it was bred out of THC in what we call the 12-12 plants or the THC plants. And why that was bred out was because over time, people wanted the THC. They wanted uh, the high times bud porn. They wanted what's the best thing to get you messed up. And that was what their focus was, was a very, very pretty bud that would just get you really high. And that was the goal. Well, CBD, when you grow CBD, uh, any plants with CBD, they're taller, they're stringier, they don't cooperate, they're picky, they're finicky, they grow sideways. Um, and so the, the THC market bred out CBD because it didn't have the pretty qualities that they liked or wanted. And when those plants grew that way, they got rid of them. Well, by getting rid of that CBD component is where we lost some medical value to THC plants. Not all, but some of that benefit. It still has huge benefit, but it's not a full spectrum medicine, which is why I really believe people should be adding CBD. And to even call it a medicine, I'd say it's not a full spectrum component. Because to me, cannabis is, yes, it works as a medicine, but it is truly a wellness um, it's a factor in wellness. It's something to use for preventive medicine, not just responsive medicine. And I hope people understand what I'm saying that. Um, responsive medicine is where you're responding to a condition. And wellness is every day. You want to take care of and care for yourself every day and be aware and be alert and be on guard for those problems that may be coming at you. So look at your wellness that way and really try to be more preventive with stuff. Of course, we're going to have to react to things 
and, and treat them as they come along. But as you get more preventive with your medicine and your wellness, you're going to find fewer of those uh, occasions happening and going on with you. So any more questions? Did I answer yours about the difference between CBD and cannabis? Or CBD and THC. Oh, one other thing. CBD is non-psychoactive whatsoever. THC is the psychoactive component. So that is also a big difference. And then they work differently within the body and, if, and different receptors. Um, a great thing to study and learn about is the endocannabinoid system. And when you learn about the endocannabinoid system, you will find that it oversees everything in our entire body. All of our neurological system is oversaw and commanded by the endocannabinoid system. And so that endocannabinoid system does a lot. And that's where the terpenes come in. The cannabinoids, when we can feed that endocannabinoid system all the cannabinoids we can and give it all the signals with all of the oils and the terpenes going, hey, over here, we want you doing this. Hey, over here, we need this. That is where we can really dial in some of that healing too. Like, say you have anxiety and IBS. I've got a couple people I'm treating for that right now. Two, right now. Um, if we can get rid of some of that anxiety, it's going to calm down that IBS. And then... Um, because IBS is also very stress driven. And when people are very high stress, you know, um, and, and it's interesting, both of these clients are female and opposite ends of the spectrum. One's a veteran, the other one is not. Um, one's a little bit better off financially, the other one is not at all, and really fighting for their life right now, um, just to try to survive. And so I see two completely different levels of stress at different, um, different levels of stress in different lifestyles but they're both suffering the exact same well not exact i'd say that the person who's more financially insecure um, definitely has more struggles because there's way more stress with that too and then constantly trying to um, treat a condition and and have the money to be able to treat a condition which when people can get into doing a whole body wellness with a whole plant. And, you know, if you get involved in doTERRA, you're not only helping yourself, but you're helping others. And um, if anybody does want to get involved in doTERRA, please look me up. I'm way happy to help you, um, teach you. That's how Terry and I got involved with each other. Um, well, no, we were friends before, but she got involved and I jumped in and now she's just stuck with me. So. <laughs> Not being stuck with anybody. <laughs> I well, love you too. <laughs> couldn't think of anybody better to be stuck with. <laughs> We're both blessed. But um, anyway, uh, it's about, we have eight minutes left. We got to get out of this room. My rent is up. Any more questions before we have to close? Eight minutes. Anybody want to do any fun stuff? Hello. Oh, I see some hearts. That's always nice. <laughs> Uh-oh, somebody's mad. Now that they're, they're crying. Yeah, well, I'm sorry. We got to go. We'll be back. You guys can call me, too. Same um, bat time, same bat channel. Same bat time, same bat channel. Terry just nailed it exactly. <laughs> and, you know, I'm always here on my Facebook. If I don't get back with people right away, I may be busy. Um, my phone number... 202-760-1924. Write that down. 202-760-1924. Text me. Call me. Please be nice. Don't submit my phone number to porn sites. Please. Come on. But, um, no, I'm happy to text or call with people. And if I don't get back with you right away, I may be tied up with a client. So um, please respect their time as well. And I'll be right back with you. Um, I did want to show you guys something I thought was really, really cool that I saw come out because it was National Geographic. And I actually, what did I spend? $15. $14 on this magazine plus tax. But I loved it. And it was, look at what National Geographic is doing. So that should still be out on shelves. Flip through it before you spend the money, but I really loved it, and I keep it with all my wellness stuff. And they've got some fantastic information in there. Um, one thing that just dawned on me, too, I know a lot of people suffer from migraines and headaches. Now, that's why I wanted to bring it up, because I just tripped over this, and I never knew about it. 
But um, regarding migraines and headaches, I had learned from my family with the completely holistic autistic child about Butterbur, which in here is listed as an all-around allergy stopper. Okay. Butterbur is also actually used for migraines. So read up on Butterbur for migraines. That was amazing stuff. And then the next one that was in here, let me find it, because it was right after that. Um, I, I just love this book. That was fantastic. It's got so much in it. Um, let me find it. Here's the one for migraine. What they put in here for migraine, I didn't suspect. Let me see if I can find the index. Of course, I didn't tab the page because I was looking at other stuff. I didn't plan on talking about migraines tonight. Um, but fantastic magazine on shelves today. Go get it if you can. Fever Few right here. I don't know if anybody has ever... There. And apparently you can get that and make a tea out of it and drink a tea every day. So, hooray. Read up on that, migraine sufferers. And then also for migraine sufferers, one thing I've learned in all of our research across the nation, in meeting thousands of patients across the nation like I have in my advocacy work, cannabis for migraines. It works in about 45% of the people. It doesn't work at all in about 45% of the people. And the other 10% completely unknown. So migraine sufferers, I'm really sorry for the pain you suffer. I know it is so horrible. But if cannabis doesn't work for you, um, turn to CBD. Try CBD, see if that helps, and maybe a daily dose of CBD. But look up the butter burr and the fever few. Okay, there are holistic ways to go and treat your um, migraine and hopefully get you out of pain and get you some rest into where you can come out of that dark room. And I, I speak specifically to these migraine people because I know how detrimental migraines can be to people. It's really, really painful and it can really put the brakes on somebody's life. So if you can get into that and do prevention and if any of those help you, please let me know. The more information we can share, the better. So i got about three minutes. I'm going to wrap it up. I'd like to thank everybody for coming and anybody who hung out all the way through with me. <laughs> I love you. You're a rock star. And to everybody who comes and listens after, um, thanks for tuning in. It means a lot to me that you want to hear what I have to say. And I hope we have more people come for an in-person class because it's easier to do um, the one-on-one -on -one questions. And um, I want to thank my great friend Terry here for helping and writing down you guys' questions. And please give her a round of applause. Everybody thank Terry and send her some love. Couldn't do it without her. And um, she's a big one of my biggest supporters, so I really appreciate that. And um, thank you all for your support. And to the people who ordered your tinctures, I'll be brewing them up and getting them out in the mail. No later than Thursday, they will be in the mail. Um, I, I definitely have all my little beakers that I need for tomorrow. Um, and then in my apothecary, I got my clean environment too. Um, the other thing that really turned me off from being able to uh, be able to work up here and do my compounding or formulations is I don't have a sink readily available and I wash my hands so much when I'm doing that kind of stuff just because I'm like a raccoon in the soap and water all the time and um, I don't have that here and I don't feel comfortable not having it. We have a bathroom down the hall and a lot of doorknobs to touch in the middle and so I don't want to have that and I just wasn't comfortable with it either. So um, someday we'll formulate but not here, <laughs> and that's why. <laughs> but I showed you my spinner and all my goodies. For people who came in late, um, please, I'm going to upload it. Come on back later and, and your, post your questions in, and I'll be sure and uh, try and answer what I can over the week, too, when people come in and ask questions. So thanks so much. We're wrapping her up. i got to go home and have some dinner. Have a good night. Thanks for watching. Share the broadcast, and don't forget, I almost forgot. Terpene Healer on Facebook.
Go like my page, please. <laughs> my Medicine Consulting on Facebook. Go like my page, please. <laughs> and then also, MyMedicineConsulting.com. Go visit our website and read up on my Terpene Healer blog. There's a lot of information on there. Anybody who wants a topic in the future, you saw we covered a lot of ground, covered more than just anxiety. Hope I answered a lot of the anxiety questions. And over time, you know, this will just get better, but I'm pretty good at rambling on for two hours, so I think we did good. Thanks. Have a great night. See you next time. Good night.